Hey everyone, my name's Drew, and we're here, and this is going to be week number two of the UPBA, and we're up against Big Time Brownie and his Green Bay Yampers, if I'm not mistaken, and this is going to be a really fun matchup. It's going to be a really scary matchup. He has a very scary spy spam team, but I've been holding him waiting a little bit long here, so I'm going to just get into it. He has a lot of different threats that is going to be difficult for me to kind of deal with. My, my strategy here is, was kind of to out damage it, so we're going to see how well of a job we can do with that, because uh, like I said, he creates a, lot, a bunch of mismatches for me. But hopefully it's something that we can kind of deal with here. Okay, so we are here with the Lele, the Sceptile, the Alakazam, Diggersby, Corviknight, and Incineroar. So right off the bat, that means no Heracross. No Heracross is really huge. No Tentacruel, no Tyrantrum, and no Shogun League fan. Okay, so most of the things that I would have expected, I kind of would have expected the Heracross over the Sceptile, but everything else is pretty much what I would have thought. Uh, I could have definitely seen the Tentacruel coming as well, but that was just not... To be. I still think that this is one of my best options in terms of leads, and it can kind of just U-turn out on anything here. And I should have I should have let the time tick down a little bit longer, but oh, and I should take a screenshot of this before I forget. But big lead options, I mean, it doesn't even look like he has a ton of hazard options. Other than what, Diggersby Spikes? So, he's leaving behind Hazards, which is good for me, I suppose. But, uh, overall, it's going to be difficult to keep Hazards up with that Corviknight there, obviously. Um, he has a lot of lead options, in all honesty. He has a ton of lead options. But I will pull up the Calcs here, and... Uh, I don't know. I'm, my gut tells me that he would want to lead off with either... The Corviknight, maybe the Diggersby. I think those two would be the most. Uh, yeah, there's the Corviknight. And we do lead off with the Coco, so we are immediately threatening this thing. And uh, this is just an easy U-turn for me. I really don't think he would want to risk this in here. I think the Diggersby is a, is a very viable option for him. And I think um, there's a lot that I can kind of play off of this here. Um, and obviously the Diggersby was such a kind of... Um, big threat here that I think he knows that I have a hard time kind of specsing myself in anything kind of being a choice mon but um ideally his Alakazam doesn't see the fact that I'm that I'll be uh, scarfed and I can deal with that if, if anything happens here but I can outspeed his entire team except uh the unburdened septile which is going to be a bit of a challenge to kind of deal with um the incinerator being here is really interesting to me obviously because um, the Galar's Aptos is such a big problem for him, I think. Um, but overall, Zapdos has a really strong matchup here, I suppose. Obviously not with the Psychic Spam, but... Psychic Lele makes a ton of sense here. Psychic Lele makes a ton of sense... Or, sorry, Scarf Lele makes a ton of sense here. Does go into the Incineroar. And... I think from here, what do we want to go into here? Um, what do we want to go into here? I kind of want to go into the Mespert and set up a rock way, but that's very not very much not a good idea. Um, Mespert is going to be my kind of especially defensive monster here. I am very interested. After the Intimidate, fifteen percent on a U turn. That actually could be just max defense and is really specially defensive, actually. Which is very, very interesting. Because honestly, I'd be really curious if that means anything for... Sand Slash. It means Sand Slash does potentially really big damage. But I could also bring in... The Zapdos for a lot of heavy pressure. Actually, yeah, Zapdos just makes a ton of sense here. And, and I can U-turn out on whatever wants to come in, and in particular if the Lele wants to come in, then that's just a huge U-turn going off there. And I kind of want to get him in the Vortex a little bit, that was kind of the intention behind the team. And now um, and now that I'm seeing how this team is kind of interacting, I, I kind of am seeing that more and more, so I do think that uh, this is going to put me in the best position overall. Uh, he has a very easy Lele play to make if he wants to make it, he has a very easy Corviknight play. Um, It'd be very interesting to see if the Corviknight is, in fact, uh, Helmet. It, that would be good information early on. 
Although I'm very much hoping that it's not helmet. And uh, chip damage on the, on the uh, Corviknight helps a ton because uh, it helps a ton in particular. It stays in. Stays in and takes a bunch of damage. Probably, no, it can't be parting shot. Maybe it's just you turning out? That doesn't make any sense. Maybe it's Chompo? Maybe it's Chompo. I don't know. That is a very strange play to me. And I don't know quite what it's doing. Maybe it's knocking off? I don't know. Because I feel like that, that just threatens like CC KO right off the bat. Kind of want to go into this. Maybe set up spikes. Uh, maybe just click Super Fang. I don't know. I don't know what to make of this. I guess I can go into this thing here. Uh, I, I honestly am at a loss for what he's gonna go in, what he's gonna go for. Um, was for a U-turn himself. Wow, that's very very strange to me. Maybe maybe just hard read my 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 potential U-turn here. Maybe just hard read a potential U-turn. Uh, if we do see the Alakazam, I think we could pretty much assume that that's. Uh, scarfed, but I'm scarfed myself, so I'll always be able to, to turn out on it. Um, but yeah, that, that genuinely threw me off quite a bit. That genuinely threw me off quite a bit. Because I think if I just click close combat, then... That was... A gone Incineroar. Like, okay, so let's, to be fair, go full-on max defense. Max defense bold. Yeah, I still just KO. What if I'm not banded? What if I'm something that's not banded? Uh, he has a chance to take it, but even then, it's not great. Uh, this I could pretty much think is. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised at all if this is scarfed. But either way, even if this means me revealing scarf, I don't mind. But I, but as, but as of right now, I'm pretty much playing under the assumption that he knows that he knows that I'm scarfed now. Um, regardless, I think this is fine here. He could U-turn himself. If he clicks U-turn, that'd be pretty bad. So I think I just do this instead, actually. It covers, yeah, it, yeah, it covers both things. And I think I'll be fine. If he goes into Alakazam, if he goes into one of the side, oh, okay. Okay, well, th well, this still covers me regardless, I think. It still covers me regardless, I think. But now I'm gonna have to check out some things. Digger speed, this thing could wild charge, honestly, which I just thought of. Um, Digger speed. Diggersby. Uh, yeah, there's, yeah, I feel like there's no reason not to just go into this thing. This thing is mainly meant for, um, his physical threats, obviously this thing, and, and, and obviously hazard control as well, but this thing is clearly not spikes. I, I think it's pretty safe to say, but this thing is kind of meant to at least switch in once to the Diggersby and, or the, and, or the, oh, switches out. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Maybe, maybe, maybe can't hit my Zapdos. Maybe just can't hit my Zapdos, which would be interesting. But by me going into this thing, it does let me get off a pretty darn free Super Fang, which is going to be big, I think. And I think I can make a bunch of plays no matter what happens here. And as long as I can keep this Corviknight low, I think it's going to be huge for me. Yeah, it is Rock Helmet. Which is kind of what I expected. Just go for the U-turn, which is totally fair. Totally fair. Um, could go into the Sceptile, I suppose. Could go into the Sceptile, I suppose. But yeah, I'm wondering what that Diggersby set could be. Goes into this thing. Okay. He could be threatening Energy Wall, but I don't think he would. Uh, I don't know what this thing would be want to do. He could just be... Specs, honestly. Specs Lele against Sand Slash. Yeah, Spec Psychic just does the most. What if I go into Mesprit? I mean, it still does a ton. Um, I maybe let this thing go down here. I maybe let this thing go down here. Uh, I could just go down getting up spikes, maybe. That's probably the best play, because I think, regardless, goes for a Reflect. Okay. Okay. Um. I think that means that for at least a while, it's going to be pretty big for me to... 
Uh, yeah, I just had the Super Fang, right? I could get up another spike. I know this thing isn't specs anymore, so I take hits reasonably well. Yeah, Super Fang just seems like the right play no matter what happens here. There's a Psychic. We should take one fine. No, we don't. Is that a crit? No, I guess not. Is that always the case? Either way, I suppose I go into this thing and get a rocks? Question mark? Uh, let me just see here. Was that was that just really offensive plus plus uh Yeah, that has to be really offensive. I I guess I just try to hazard stack for now, right? I probably should have clicked U-turn. I probably should have clicked U-turn, realistically. But now I'm kind of in this thing. At this point, yeah, at this point I probably just go into Vaporeon, because now Vaporeon is, plays much more different. Um, you could just U-turn right away. That would be not ideal. But I don't think I mind getting knocked off a ton. I probably shouldn't have sacked off um, my Sand Slash that quickly, but I think Hazard Stacking is going to be interesting for me. Also, this thing is Boots. I think I just uh, should have clocked that a little bit earlier. But I think I flip turn on this regardless. I kind of feel like he just wants to click U-turn uh, now. Um, or I just click Scald. It does invite in the Sceptile, but I think it's going to be too early. I, I, th I think he's always going to assume that, this, that it's too early for the Sceptile. I could sub. I could sub. No, I think I just click flip turn here. Um... There's the flip turn. He could be U-turning it out himself. I think regardless, I go into the Coco here. Because, here's the thing. The Coco disallows the Diggersby to come in. Uh, he, he's gonna click U-turn. I'm already kind of assuming that, right? But it disallows the Diggersby to come in. It disincentivizes the... The... Corviknight to come... This just disincentivizes the most number of things to want to come in on my Coco. Right, if anything, the thing you want in most on the Coco is the Incineroar, and in which case, uh, this is kind of where I want to be. I wouldn't be surprised at all if he tries to bring in the Diggersby. That wouldn't... yeah, does bring in the Diggersby. Which is fine. He probably has a couple turns left of... Uh, it's a, it's a Shisperia. Okay, okay. Is it Cheek Pouch? Re reflector is off. Uh, I think I just... I don't know. Okay, I should I should actually do some due diligence here. Diggersby. Um, yeah, damage... Yeah, I don't really have enough damage on board here. Uh, even if this is Noble, so I have to click U-turn. Uh, this should do around 30-ish percent. Yeah, so, so yeah, so I can safely assume no bulk on this. Um... Maybe dual dance. Maybe dual dance plus. Maybe dual dance plus. Uh, goes for a body slam. A para would be huge. Okay, thankfully no para. But could be, could be. No, I don't think he has room for. I don't think he has room for quick attack, right? And no, he, he he probably doesn't bring quick attack on an agility set, right? So now that I see this, uh, actually, you turn should KO. So I have to be wary of of the Corviknight coming in and getting Rocky Helmet. But this thing is going to get even more worn down over time. Uh, the Diggersby, I mean, because of the spikes and the rocks, and this is going to obviously disincentivize. Um, a defog here because I can. Uh, there's a number of things that I can do here, and I think the best thing that I could do is probably break in the Mesprit, right? No, the Mesprit's a little bit necessary here. Um, how do I do this? Mm. 
No, I think the Mesprit's fine, right? I think the Mesprit's fine. This is going to be a tough game because it's going to be tough again to kind of um, choice myself into certain moves. But I should be able to put on some Thunderbolt pressure. He might, yeah, he might even just stay in because he's not worried about this thing. But yeah, that should pick up a KO and that's huge. That is huge, huge, huge. Not having to worry about helmet and defog as well, actually. So that's even bigger than I initially thought. Um, He probably wouldn't go into a Psychic Spam. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely the most... Um, likely thing to want to go into. I can U-turn out into... into... Um, into Vaporeon, and I can... start to try to make things happen. But it's gonna be tough, to, honestly, to wear down this Incineroar. It's gonna honestly be challenging to wear down this Incineroar. I wouldn't be surprised if he just raw knocks off. Um, just assuming that whatever wants to come in wouldn't want to be knocked off, but uh, I think U-turn is much more likely. Yeah, yeah, because he's trying to get me caught up in the in the vor vortex as much as I am to him. Um, I could definitely see the Lele coming in. Yeah, Lele makes the most sense, right? Lele probably makes the most sense. But as long as Mesprit is still really, really healthy, it's still really tough for those for those Psychic Mons. And especially that the Lele is so worn down. It does bring in the Lele. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Um, I'm still not entirely sure how I deal with this, but I do know that this thing is not choice. Which does mean that my that my Zapdos outspeeds, which does mean that uh, bringing it in is a very, very free Break Bird, actually. It's a remarkably free Break Bird. Which is kind of huge right now, actually. So I'm gonna click flip turn. Goes for the reflect, which is not great. Um, but we do know that this Lele is not the most bulky. So would I be able to KO through Reflect? It is it is actually pretty iffy. Huh. So I probably want to go into Zapdos and U-turn into... U-turn into... Mesprit. I also... I also believe that, it's con that this is confirmed to not be... To not be... Lake Clay. Could be Twisted Spoon, honestly. Could be too to win. That would make sense for the earlier damage rolls. But regardless, um, getting a bunch of damage on this thing and keeping my my Zapdos safe is huge. I've seen this thing switch up moves, so, I'm, so I know it's not scarfed. Um, he could potentially want to switch out here. Switching out would be best case scenario, probably. Oh, um, if he goes in, into the Digger Speed, then I do have Mons that threaten the Digger Speed, especially assuming that that it's got. Actually, no, knowing that it's um. Well, no. I, well, no, I guess I don't know that. But yeah, if I am to assume that it's a slower Diggers B because of its because of it being an, an agility set, um, it does kind of allow me to go into Mesprit, maybe, and... and uh, Actually, no, I think Porygon's going to be the best play no matter what happens here. That's, again, just a very, very strange play to me. That's a very, very strange play to me. Um, but realistically, he, he knew that I was that I was never in a position to. Well, no, but I could have brave birded, right? He's giving me a free plus one on my brave bird. Regardless, this is Porygon's time, I think. And just being able to go into Porygon here, and there's nothing stopping me from just clicking Tri Attack a whole bunch of times in a row. Um, a guaranteed outspeed. Uh, a guaranteed outspeed. Um, Diggersby, even if it is Scarfed, even though I know it's not Scarfed. Um, and I outspeed, and I outspeed a non-Scarfed Alakazam. I don't outspeed a post-unburden, uh, Sceptile, but we just have kind of deal with that as, as it comes. Uh, okay, this thing wants to come in. I think this just means that I go into... 
I really want to just hit this thing, honestly. I desperately just want to hit this thing. I think I do just to potentially break a sash here. I think I do. Just to, just to break a potential sash. I think I take one hit. If I don't, then I look honestly kind of dumb. To be honest. Um, expanding force. Uh, yeah, okay, that's just a straight KO. That's fine. I think that's fine. I think ultimately it's going to be fine. Because it means that regardless, I can go into this thing. I can U-turn. And I can continue to just do a lot of damage to the team. Breaking Sash was always going to be a challenge here. And it was always going to be kind of um, a big deal. What does... What have I KO'd so far? Okay, so Sceptile... Okay. And how many turns of... How many turns of... Reflect. Last turn of Reflect. I can't imagine this thing takes a U-turn takes a even through Reflect. What's for Protect? Okay. 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 Well, again, um, I don't think... Reflect ever matters. There's no switch that makes sense for him at all. Especially because, yeah, Reflect is now over, right? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So now my so now my U-turns are full power. It really disincentivizes the, the Lele from wanting to come in. This thing gets KO'd every time. And... Um... Yeah. I can honestly bring in the Vaporeon just to kind of scout out what he wants to do. It disincentivizes the... The... Actually, no, no, no. What I do is bring this thing in. What I do is bring this thing in. Because this is this actually dis disincentivizes the most things. And if it invites in the Sceptile... If it invites in the Sceptile... Then... That's not great. Um, goes into this. Okay. Okay. So this should bring it down to about 50%. And... Um... Yeah, U-turn doesn't do enough, but Brave Bird does, and I think I just go for it. Because by Brave Birding, it definitely doesn't allow in the the diggers be anymore and obviously getting this thing off the board just straight up withdraws to giving up the diggers be yeah giving up the diggers be that's fair that's fair but now the lele is just in a so much of a tougher position here because obviously what he's doing is he's um going into the septile to pop the um, uh, uh unburden but yeah yeah. So at that point, I just have to be reliant on on uh, on on Mesmer to be able to take hits from the Sceptile and and hopefully be able to do a KO with Ice Beam. That's where I'm at now. And I probably just let this thing go down? Question mark. I probably just let this thing go down. It doesn't feel worth it to not let this thing go down, right? Uh, it's it's tough. It's tough. I think I'm fine to let this thing go down. Let's go for acrobatics. Okay. Probably also has EQ for the Coco. But again, it's all just going to be up to Mesper to 2 a KO. And with the... With the... Hazards, I think I think I should to a KO. Reasonably comfortably. I probably should have clicked U-turn. No. I don't know, maybe not. What is this thing called? Sceptile. Sword stance, okay. Uh against Mesperit. There's the ice beam, goes from about 75. Ugh, that's a dirty, dirty roll. From 75 to what? 40? Yeah, that's a rough one, actually. That's a super rough one. 
But at this point, I mean, there's nothing left to do here. Ugh, I think this wins, doesn't it? This just beats me. I think I just lost. This thing is Leaf Blade, Earthquake. Leaf Blade, Earthquake. Acrobatics. And I just lost. But there's nothing that else that I could have done. Yeah, there was nothing else that I could have done. Other than keep the Zapdos healthier. Yeah, this thing just beats me. I don't think there's anything else left I can do. Unless... Uh... Actually, this thing is pretty weak. Oh, no. Yeah, plus, at, at plus two, it should do everything that it needs to do. Ugh, that's super rough. Yeah, ugh. That sliver's gonna be tough. Unless, my only saving grace would be if, if he made this thing super slow. And... Actually... This thing could be s slower and bulkier because Ice Beam should have actually done way, way more. Like, significantly more. So if this thing is, like, even max HP and it's not that fast, then Scarfed Coco wins. Scarfed Coco wins, actually. But I guess, I guess, at this point, there's nothing left but to see if Scarfed Coco wins or it doesn't win. There's honestly not even a point. Man, uh, again. I honestly think, I honestly think that's just a, that there's a good chance that Coke, that this thing is not fast enough for Scarfed Coco. I don't think it's crazy that this thing would be not fast enough for Scarfed Coco. Because at plus two. Actually, it would literally have to be no speed investment for, for me to be faster. So it's actually not that likely. There's Leaf Blade. We don't take it at plus two. No, we don't. Yeah, that's rough. That's rough. I don't think there's anything that I could have done differently, though, because that set just always beats the team that I brought. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, there was nothing that I could have done here. Is there? I don't think so. I don't think so. The answer, I guess, I guess, well, well, okay, so, so, I, I, I would have won if I had Rocky Helmet. That's, that's, that's a given, right? But what else? I think I could have won if I brought the Santa Scorch, I guess? Well, no, but then he has the, the plus two acrobatics. Yeah, it's rough. It's rough. I mean, maybe a faster Scarfed Coco, but, but realistically, I think he would know what he needs to beat Scarfed Coco. Yeah, he doesn't even need a whole ton of speed to outspeed Scarfed Coco. Max speed Scarfed Coco. He only needs 84 speed EVs, and that's an easy one to kind of do. Yeah, he's messaging right now, and he says that he, that he put a, that he put some extra bulk in a Sceptile. I guess I could have gotten up on a, another layer of spikes. That would have been huge. I guess that's the only thing that I could have done differently. I honestly don't know what else I could have done, because it definitely beats the Porygon. It definitely beats the Porygon. Yeah, assuming it's max attack adamant, it ate Oko's Porygon on the spot, right? The fact that it did that much to Mesprit... Yeah, there was just nothing I could have done. Yeah, I mean, that set is the set that he needed, and it definitely worked out for him. So, great game. He definitely played it the way that it needed to be played, and uh, hopefully we can bounce back from this and have a really fun week three. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the UPBA and more weeks of the UBL. And I'm really, really excited for the kind of teams that I'm kind of building for those. But once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll be once again out.